Okay, I'm not that formal. <laughs> All right, over here we took apart two inkjet printers because the first one didn't have everything we wanted. So the team that took this apart, why don't you talk about what you found in the first inkjet printer? Uh, in the first one we found two different separate motors for controlling the head and the paper feed. Um, the backside has two micro, process, two micro controllers and several other uh, controllers beyond those. <clears throat> Yeah, so they've got some, it's got some drive circuitry for yeah. power. Um, where was the sensor? Uh, let's see. Let's that see was somewhere. this guy. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. It had a photo uh, sensor. Oh, is that? I, th I don't think that's what you're looking for. I think no. that's the power plug. Here, here it is. This is what you're looking oh, yeah. for. There we no, go. No, that was off of this guy. Oh, okay. Um, this one might not have had a good fit. Good well, maybe you're thinking sensor. this one. This yeah. one may have a sensor like the uh, other one. Uh, yeah, there's a photo interrupter right there. Okay. So yeah. it's it's somehow probably the paper moves this flag, and either it's between blocking light or it's not. So there's a photo sensor right there. But you were mentioning the power electronics over here, which are basically amplifiers. Remember we talked in the lecture about drive uh, electronics. So the microprocessor can't put out enough power to drive that motor directly, so you have to have something. Probably this chip is what we came up with. You want to explain why we thought that that was the drive chip? So when we f were following the paths in the board itself, all of the stuff going from this either goes to the motor itself or back towards the chip, it does not touch this ribbon cable. Um, these transistors here uh, touch the ribbon cable along with these two controllers and that one. Yeah. And this ribbon cable then controls the inkjet itself, so where it plays the ink on the paper, uh, for the printer. Yeah. So like the other printer had a circuit board mounted on the carriage, this one does not. This one, that circuit board is integrated in to the electronics here. And like you were saying, these are probably firing those cartridges. One of the reasons, besides the traces that we thought this was controlling the motor, is that it looks kind of weird. It's got these big tabs on it. Well, those tabs are there for heat sinking. So that, uh, so you know this chip is switching a, a decent amount of power uh, because there's, there's always some loss, some inefficiency and that's going to generate heat and that heat needs to be conducted away from the chip so the chip doesn't melt and uh, destroy itself. Okay, uh, let's see, anything else interesting? Well, why was this inkjet printer not useful for us? At least not for uh, uh, ultimate I purposes. I don't remember. Uh, the reason is because we had two stepper motors. I was hoping we'd find a printer that had a stepper motor and a DC motor but at least a DC motor. So we might use this for a couple of the initial laboratories. Probably what we'll do is we'll put this printer with that other one. Remember the other one only has DC motors? Because I do want you guys to learn how to operate steppers as well as DC motors. Um, so we'll put this one with the other one. So we've got DC and stepper. And then this platform will serve just fine for one group because it has a stepper for driving the paper and it has a DC motor for driving the carriage. This one has the linear encoder like the other one. Um, Anything else I'm missing on this one, guys? Uh, this was its photoceptor. That's for paper. For the paper sensor? Okay. Yeah. One thing to note, the circuit board in this is, is a lot smaller than what you see on this one and even the other one. You've got USB right here, and this is pretty much it. And electronics, of course, just get smaller as time goes on because they learn how to make them smaller and more efficient. So we were thinking that probably this is a USB communications chip. This is probably a microcontroller that would include memory as well as the microprocessor. And uh, got some dot, uh, LEDs, light emitting diodes, as well as some switches here for user input and signaling output to the user. Um, how about a power supply on this thing? Did we find a power supply? Mm, no, I just said the USB. USB is power. Oh, it was driven right off USB? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, more efficient then, I guess. Um, fortunately, we're not going to use these logic boards anyway. We don't need them. We'll hook up directly to the motors and control them that way. But we will have to hack into the... Um, as we go ahead and take these out. We will have to hack into the photo sensors that are dealing with the um, quadrature uh, and the encoder. If, I don't know if you can get a shot of this, but if you look back behind there, and I want everybody to see this, there's something wrapping around the, uh, the linear encoder. Do you see that? Okay, so let's pass it around and let everybody look at it. That is the sensor that's sensing the movement along that, that uh, strip. 
And that's what we'll have to hack into uh, in order to use the, uh, the linear encoder. Okay. All right. Uh, we don't have to shut it off this time.